Look at that, look how dreary jumper is. Compared to, uh, like a geography teacher or something, look how very bland. Or is it, because shoulders give it a little bit of summit, don't they? Shoulders give it a little bit of, um, bit of TV, a bit of 80s TV shoulders in it. 80s TV shoulders, sort of like a geography teacher middle bit. That's how we roll. Uh, hello and welcome. I'm just going to fly through this. I'm not going to um, waffle on too much because I know what I'm like. I've even done a few notes because <laughs> I had to. Because what this you'll know from the title that this is the top eight um, best meals that we've cooked outdoors. Myself and Joey D or just myself. But what I did, I spoke to Joey D and uh, got a some ideas from him of what he thought was the his favourite. Um, I ignored them and I just went fully with what I thought. <laughs> I didn't really. I took that into consideration, Joseph von Diddle Sprouts. Right, let's just jump into it. It's the top eight, and this is for different reasons. It's not just necessarily the culinary skills behind it or the food itself it can it, it's the situation and the, the meal as a whole so I'm gonna start at eight and I'm gonna work my way up to number one at number eight coming in at number eight we've got uh, Joey D's blueberry pancakes and these were delicious because um, Joey D had took the time and I didn't know he took the time to do it to prepare all the stuff and bring it out and we uh, we never normally do sweet stuff, so it was a lovely, a lovely morning treat to have with our coffee, and one that, um, yeah, the one that sticks in my mind, and a good little start at number eight. Number seven, sticking with the um, the sweet theme, was when I cooked up. Um, yeah, I cooked up a couple of desserts. I was practicing doing desserts on the bush box. I did um, banana with chocolate buttons in it and then cinnamon pineapple. And it was delicious and one that's scorched into my mind. When I think about things that I've enjoyed, um, that's one. And I think that's... Yeah, that's the only real sort of dessert, really, that's on there. So big up that one in at number seven. In at number six is a recent one, which is the fish and chips that I cooked out in the woods. Um, that is on the list because it's, you know, there was a bit of forward thinking going into that one. And I just went out specifically to, to cook it up. And I did it because it's sort of synonymous with the seaside and Whitby where I grew up. And it, it's, I sort of nailed it and it tasted delicious. So <laughs> that's on there. Number five. I hope I'm putting little gr like graphics up uh, on the screen when I do this, if I can be asked. I hope I've done that anyway. Note to uh, future Hazel, do that mate, do that. Make sure you put numbers on there because it'll look good. Because you, you, I'm flying through these, I hope I've got some stuff to interject with. I will do. Anyway, waffling, I'm not even... I'm on to... Uh, I'm not even on the sauce. Right. Number five is an absolute piscatorial medley. It we got we had a full salmon and um, did it sort of traditional style. Cooked it over the fire. We had sea bass, uh, mussels. It was an absolute culinary delight, man. It was, uh, and we just spent such a lovely day and one that I'll remember. And that's one of the ones that Joey D said when I told him about. Uh, that I was going to do this video of top eight, he said that one and I'd forgot it, it slipped my mind and I was like, yeah, that salmon was pretty cool. That was really good, in fact. Yeah, that's well worthy of being there. Number four. Number four is the crayfish and steak, the surf and turf. And the reason this is up there is because I just enjoy being in water and foraging in water and... Um, so getting the crayfish was an absolute dream. I just loved it. It was freezing and I maybe stayed in a little bit too long, but I absolutely loved it. And then just cooked it with a ribeye, just kept it really simple. Um, and it just it just worked. 
and the things behind it as well. It was a, it was a, a recap on the show's this your stake. So it all just sort of it was the perfect storm really, and it made a it made for good eating. So that's number four. Number three. Right, we're getting into the big boys now. Top three. But number three is Joey D's sea bass that he caught when we were we were surviving on the coast and we took very minimal rations. We hardly had anything because the idea was to survive on, on what we could catch and what we could forage. Um, and we, would, we were fishing relentlessly and then it was one of the last casts because the tides had shifted and we were on this rock out at the sea and uh, and he put and he pulled in a bass and the elation and I know if you're watching this Joey D you can you'll be reliving it with me now the elation was like a lottery win I can only imagine just pure primal um, primal happiness knowing that we were going to eat well and that we you know we put a lot of effort into getting this fish uh, many people have said that it looks a little bit small and I agree it might be look a little bit small and and you know I'm sorry for that but it we, we were we were we were sort of in a survival situation not we we put ourselves in a survival situation um and yeah and and we didn't know any better really so it was I'm gonna say for the for the purpose of the video it was bang on legal limit and it was delicious. It wasn't. It didn't. It didn't die in vain. It was. It was really appreciated, and it was delicious. And we had that with a few uh, limpets and some um, some velvet crabs. And it was just a lovely, you know, no seasoning, just as nature intended. Uh, delicious. Delicious. In at number two, and this would have been number one, would it not have been for the everything that surrounded number one? So number two is the lobster that me and Joey D had in the woods because I put a lot of a, a lot of work in went into getting this lobster I didn't drink you know I watched my boy drinking his wine and his beers and I stayed sober because I knew I was going out into the sea and I just wanted to have a clear head um, we were getting it was the, the conditions weren't great the, the currents were pretty mad and visibility was low and we kept, we got in, got out, I got back in again, got back out, and then I said, right, one more, mate, I'm just going to go for one more. And I bagged it, I bagged the lobster. <laughs> heroically, heroically bagged this lobster, and we went into the woods and just cooked it simply over the coals, and the taste, and oh man, it was just, obviously no seasoning on it, but it was, it was delicious, the smokiness from the fire, and the fact, the whole story behind it, and the fact that the amount of hard work that went into getting it, really appreciated that one. That was that is up there, one of the best meals I've ever had in my life, let alone campfire meals. And that that would have been the winner for me if, if it wasn't for the the stuff that surrounds the number one. So coming in at number one on the list is the steak in northern monk butter sauce that um, that I cooked when I did the shows your steak challenge not only it was a good quality meat and a good quality cut um, the the butter sauce with the beer reduction and stuff just really made it uh, and it's it's everything it's everything that surrounds it as well it's not just how delicious it was which it was but it transcended its culinary delights because it went on to become a like it went viral and it it, it went global and I, and from the amount of messages that I got from it, it really did help people. If it would have still gone viral and helped so many people, then it's still getting in. It doesn't matter whether it's a steak or whether it's a like a deep fried Cadbury's cream egg. It just so happens it was also very delicious. And, uh, and I'm very proud of that one, and I'm, I'm and I'm very humbled by how, by the by the the support for it, and um, and I'm just I'm touched at how many people it it helped, and still continues to help people. You know, I I was tagged just the other day in something to do with the shows your steak challenge, which just it's pretty humbling. It's pretty amazing, and so that has that has to be number one. It just has to be number one. The best campfire meal that I've had so far. 
I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed a little... Uh, it's been really enjoyable looking back over some of the culinary exploits that myself and Joey D have had out in the wilderness. <sighs> Take care of yourselves. Namaste haze. Oh, got to stop saying that. I can't, can't hijack namaste. My, that, well, the arrogance of hijacking such a word for myself. Namaste haze. Namaste hydrated. Right. We'll send this brew off in a wanna. USA, USA. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, I'll see you soon. The circle of life. What's it like? <laughs> Too strong. Oh, is it good? No. Are we in? It's amazing. Is it? We're in. Yeah. <laughs> It's like pudding. <laughs> I'm like Jordan, trying to rise on to the dunk. Now yeah, I'm trying to be an icon from the jump. They were war, then I let bygones be bygones. Cause they bars all have gone by by the month. Now yeah, I'm trying to be an icon from the jump. They were war, then I let bygones be bygones. Cause they bars all have gone by by the month.